All right, so dictionaries. Okay, so if you struggled through the last video, that's okay, right? The point was is that that was a really complicated and over-the-top way of doing things, right? And if you didn't watch it, whatever. So, you know, point being is that, that this code was a real pain to write, and there's got to be an easier way. And the only way there's going to be an easier way is that if there's an easier way to organize things, which is a dictionary. Now, dictionaries are amazing. I'm going to boot up IL to kind of just show the common operations that we can do with them. But dictionaries are so powerful. Um, they, and, we have re and that's because we use them for three really common tasks. The first is key value storage. So say, given a customer's email address, give me all the customer information related to that email address, right? You can look it up very easily. Okay, the, um, or given, you know, a customer's username, right? Give me all the pertinent stuff in their shopping cart or, you know, giving me this shopping cart ID, give me all the stuff in the shopping cart. It is very powerful. Given a key, uh, give, me, give me this value, which can be one thing or an entire blob of things and retrieve it. Another thing as I've kind, as I've, um, as I've kind of hinted at, is that dictionaries are really good at counting things, right? Here we were trying to find the most common letter and we needed to count each letter how many times it occurred. Dictionaries are awesome at that. Um, the third thing that dictionaries are awesome at is uh, something that doesn't get used too often, which is called, uh, but it makes sense what it is, it's called categorization. And here we, we have a key and a value and the value is all the things that belong belong to the uh that are in the category of that key key value what am i even talking about at this point right so let's go ahead and show you so a dictionary right you can think of as the world as a super powered list it is a super power list and one last thing to mention if you know big o notation big uh dictionaries do this all in usually constant time in other words instantaneously uh, if you're curious about how they work, um, our the tw my 2168 course, um, our data structures course at Temple goes over that. It is we go into pretty good detail about that, um, and you can check out the videos on my YouTube webpage. I have a playlist about those. It's in Java, but you might be able to understand it. It's perfectly fine. So anyway, we create a dictionary using the curly braces like that. Okay. Now we think of them as a superpowered list, so we can actually. Uh, and we don't actually ever have to append anything. We just can kind of make up the indices as we go along. So d of zero is equal to, and I'm gonna use strings here so that, uh, so I'm not gonna to get too confused, uh, apple. Zero, and this what this says is that says, uh, key zero gives me apple. A key is a lot like an index, as you can see, right? In fact, it works the same way as an index in terms of notation. You say, uh, given this, this key, in subscript notation, just like you would a list, an apple. But notice that I've used curly braces, not brackets here, right? And if I try to do that with a list, I'd get an error. Well, I'd get an error for a different reason, right? Because it says it's out of range. There is no range in a dictionary. You just kind of make up the indices as you go along. Uh, so d0, right, this will retrieve apple back, right? If I want to change it, right, no problem. If I want my, in, if I want key zero to represent a banana, no problem there as well. Reassignment is a thing. Right, so now um, I could do um, d1 is equal to, uh, cucumber and then I could say and that is no problem and let's take a look at what it looks like now zero one okay zero gives me banana one will give me cucumber uh, but I don't have to keep it in I don't have to play by the same rules I do with a list I can have gaps actually it's best not to think of it as gaps, as you'll see in a second. I'm just kind of trying to build up to, you know, blow your mind, so to speak. So, um, I don't know how to spell raisins. 
Okay. Right? I can put whatever keys I want in there. And that includes strings being a key. So if I ask D favorite color, If I give it, I can say my key is going to be favorite color, and I want to get the value out, which gives me blue. So basically, so every item, so every pairing, every mapping is called an item in dictionaries. And every item is a pair, right? It's a pair of two things, a key and a value. Now this is what we call a, now this can be a one-to-many relationship or one-to-one -one relationship, by which I mean that you can have, all the keys must be unique, but there's nothing stopping me from going banana crazy. So like this, for I in range uh, zero to 10, I'm doing this example for a number of reasons, uh, D, of i equal to banana. So I can have multiple things being a banana. But um, so, so 0, 1, 9, B, uh, favorite color blue, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, banana. So you'll note that we basically, that um, again, we have any number of unique um, any number of unique keys, but the values can be whatever the heck we want, right? We can have as many values, uh, the values can share the same, same, uh, value, so to speak. Um, and we saw basically if we tried, if we, re if we, uh, try to reuse a key, we'll just replace it. Like we replaced apple with banana fairly early on. Okay. So there's nothing really stopping us from doing it. So Dictionaries have these very basic operations, which is that we can um, get an item, right? So that was doing this. D of one is equal to apple. Oh, sorry, this is setting an item, my bad. This is, oh, so why don't I go back to the original example? We can get an item, given a key, give me the item associated with that key, boom. Given a key, Okay, given a value, or given a key and a value, I can set the key to be that value, so apple. So we can get things from, it, from this, we can set things from it. We can also ask, are these things uh, in it? So for instance, I can ask, well, let's go ahead and see how the in operator works with this, right? It worked with a list, works with strings. Let's go ahead and see. So let's go ahead and see uh, bread in D. False, right? It's neither, look in here, it's not in there at all. Okay, um, what about um, banana in D? False, wait, no, I see tons of bananas. I'm bananas about bananas. There should be, there's bananas everywhere. Obviously you're lying. Obviously, Python, you're lying, or possibly I'm wrong. In fact, I'm probably wrong because I'm human and you're a computer. And computers are never wrong, right? So, um, so what we're doing here is actually uh, when we when we use the in operator like this, when we ask to see if something's in there, we're asking if this is a key. Is banana a key? And we never use banana as a key, right? It's never on the left side of a pair. It's always on the right side of a pairing, right? Left side of so here, right? And in fact, right? If I do this, d banana, right? This is again. I'm trying to use banana as a key rather than a value, right? A value is what gets, you, you give it a key to retrieve a value, right? So my, my keys are the numbers zero through nine inclusive, and then favorite color is also that. So if I ask for D banana and I try to get it, I get key error, banana. It's kind of, this is like the index out of bounds or the or out of range error that you might see in when you're using a list, right? So, 
okay, but you can check if things are in there, right? I can, I can ask, is this key in there before I try to do this call? To, and by doing so, I can prevent this from happening. Oh, um, and let's see, D, um, let's go with seven is equal to um, Alice, Bob, Carl, right? I can make anything I want to be the value. Seven, Alice, Cobb, uh, Bob, Carl, eight, right? And I can make almost anything I want be a key. I said I could use anything, but honestly, in reality, all you're gonna use is, what you're probably gonna use are uh, numbers and um, numbers and uh, strings. So here I'm gonna say D of, um, so let's go ahead and say D of, is equal to a comma b yeah, that's a big enough list uh so let's go ahead and say d of test right test being a list here says unhashable type list unhashable what is are we, are we working with potatoes and we're chopping up them into hash browns now getting kind of hungry now uh no hashable is so this is there's this entire operation called hashing uh, where basically if you give it something, the idea behind hashing is that, is that we can produce like very quickly this kind of unique number for any kind of object. Um, so if I run this again, right, it seems random, but basically hash uses some crazy math, uh, to produce this, uh, this number. And, and this is used internally by dictionaries. You do not need to know about that and how that works. That's perfectly fine. What you do, but basically what you do need to know is that there are limitations as to what can be used as a um, index in Python, what could be used as a key in Python. So, but for the most part, especially in this class and the assignment you're gonna see in this class, I'm pretty much gonna stick to numbers and, and let, and letters. Speaking of numbers, uh, let's go ahead and just check one more thing. D 3.14. Yeah, key error. So you can use, so I can say uh, D 3.14 equals pi, and it's perfectly happy taking a float as that. So, okay. So the question is, okay, well, we could iterate through a list right we could iterate through everything in a list fairly easily because they were all lined up in a row but these indexes but the you know indices are from zero to whatever number they are but keys they're whatever the heck we want and actually unlike lists they are pretty much like just thrown wherever right they, they take up this uh, internally you'll see that they take up this big amount of space well you see in 2168 they take up this chunk of space and we just kind of throw them wherever they need to go so that we can look them up really quickly using uh the dark magic of hashing um so how do we iterate over them well that sounds like a great spot to where to break this video so i'm going to show how we iterate over these things and then i'm going to go ahead and start looking at this problem and then this is it right the textbook is after that really the only way to really learn them is start working them with them